Oil market has on Thursday stated that the reason behind the long queues at petrol filling stations in Abuja, Nasara, and Niger State is the insufficient supply of premium motor spirit by the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation Limited. The NNPCL, which is the sole importer and of the product, refuted the oil marketer's claim, attributing the queues in the affected areas, particularly Abuja, to price war. The queues for petrol at filling stations in Abuja and its neighboring states, in particular, as well as some southeast and south-south states, have persisted in the past few weeks. The National Public Relations Officer, Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria, Chief Ukadike Chinedu, noted that though LNPCO had promised to discharge some vessels of PMS at Wari, Lagos and Calabar soon, the product had yet to arrive. This, according to Ipman official, was among the reasons private depot owners had raised the cost of their product, leading to the hike in the pump price of petrol at retail outlets. The federal government has concluded plans to withdraw civil claims totaling $1.1 billion against Enis Powell ending a long battle in Italy courts over allegations of corruption in an oil field deal. Report says that the Ministry of Justice will waive the claims before Italy's highest court unconditionally and with immediate effect no later than November 17. According to Bloomberg, the country the county will also irrevocably waive the rights to any further legal action in Italy against Eni its affiliates and current and past officers regarding rights for the field known as Oil Prospective License 245 or OPL 245. Ibi confirmed receipt of the letter and said in a statement that it was ready to consider together with the government of Nigeria the necessary step for, conversation, for conversion of prospective license to one that will allow the development of the oil block. The Ogun State Commissioner for Women Affairs and Social Development, Adija Adelaye, has advocated for more initiative to privatize uh, financial inclusion, gender responsive, gender responsive policy, rather, and supportive network that would aid the successes of women led businesses. She disclosed this at the night policy dialogue series on entrepreneurship with a theme enabling nano and micro women led businesses tribes in Africa organized by the Faith Foundation in Lagos. According to Adelaye, the proposed initiative being a combined effort of government, non-governmental organizations and public spirited individuals would serve as catalysts for transformative forces and address unique challenges. She added that it would uh, transform lives and contribute significantly to national economic development. Adelaide maintained that African women entrepreneurs in nano and micro uh, enterprises remain crucial for financial growth. A capital market holding company in AfriVest West African Limited has advised monetary and fiscal authorities to rethink uh, their anti-inflation strategies in a bid to address the ugly narrative of a surging inflation rate. The managing director of Afrinvest uh, West African Limited, E.K. Chioke, disclosed this in a statement on Wednesday in Lagos. In the statement, Chioke called for the unveiling of, two, of the 2023 Nigerian banking sector report titled Getting Nigeria to Work Again. He explained that both the monetary and fiscal authorities had been fixated on the control of the money supply and selective tax reliefs. Chioke warned that failure to stem the surging inflation tide in the near term would result in a contagion financial sector crisis and by extension retail other segments of the economy from the growth path. Also speaking, the Chief Executive Officer at the Ministry of Finance Incorporated, Dr. Armstrong Tatang, said the government took the right step by 
instituting forex reforms and freeing forex previously used to defend the Naira. Up ahead, U.S. pledges support for Nigeria's creative industry. More details after this time. Welcome back. The Consul General of the U.S. Embassy in Nigeria, Will, Will Stevens, has said that the United States would continue to support the creative industry in Nigeria and the rest of Africa. He stated this during the panel session at the just-concluded African Creative Market Summit in Lagos. According to Stevens, Africa's creativity in music, film, fashion, and the art has continued to garner global attention. He emphasized the importance of bridging the gap between African creativity and the global stage. On her part, the organizers of the event and founder of Accent Studios, Iyang Lawal, expressed optimism that the event would go a long way in unlocking opportunities in the creative industry and contribute to the national economy. Governor Babajide Sonwolu of Lagos State has said that businesses must devise means to adapt to the current economic shocks in order to survive. Sonwolu, who was represented by his commissioner for commerce, cooperatives, and trade and investment, Falashade Ambrose, Mediben stated this at the just concluded Lagos International Trade Fair. The governor also promised that to navigate the economic challenges and forge a path to prosperity, the Lagos State government, through the Ministry of Commerce, Cooperatives, Trade and Investment, is willing and ready to interface with businesses by creating a friendly environment and enhancing the ease of doing business in Lagos State. On his part, the president of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Michael Olawaleko, said this uh, said it was gratifying to observe that attendees of the trade fair engage in fruitful business dealings. The Minister of Solid Minerals Development, Dele Alake, has launched revised guidelines uh, of the Community Development Agreement. It is part of the ministry's effort to stop dispute between communities and mining companies. This was as he revealed that 252 mining companies have signed a community development agreement to provide basic infrastructure to host communities in Nigeria. Alake, while giving his keynote address at the launch of the revised CDA in Abuja on Thursday, said the main objective was to create awareness on the importance of a community development agreement for sustainable mineral resources development. The minister admitted that mining projects have the potential to impact host communities either, either positively or negatively, adding that the negative effects are often met with incessant complaints and sometimes resistance that may trigger forceful closure or suspension of activities in the mines. <laughs> 